engineering after engineering i gave a gate and got into indian oil so i uh, i have been working in supply chain uh, throughout the six and a half years and i have handled various roles in supply chain initially i worked in the assembly line so i was in manufacturing mm-hmm. after that i switched to indian oil and now i've been in india for 5 years we were hoping to get in any geography where both of us would be hmm. able to study together hmm. we we did not want to be separated while we are studying hmm. so that is our first priority hmm. and we did give a lot of preference to india because we did know that in the longer term we would definitely hmm. want to be in india itself uh then after our gmat we talked to shri and she so mm-hmm. that uk might be a geography that actually mm-hmm. might be feasible for us mm-hmm. because of the cost involved and the kind of language also language and the kind of reputation of the colleges that they have so yeah. initially we just our geography was mainly focused on the fact that like we needed to study together and practically we should be able to get somewhere together yeah at least in the same job yeah we, we, we were avoiding us all together uh, because us two year mba most of the colleges offer two year mba so for us india and europe made sense and singapore so europe maybe is because of the language issues uh, she also suggested the let's try uk first yeah. right so that's how india and uh, we applied to colleges in uk so you know couples doing an mba together is uh, a very risky proposition normally right uh, yeah. and normally what everybody says is okay one of you go and then i will go the next year yeah. so we can manage the finances and all that that's normally what people so were, was that something on your mind did you actually think through that aspect of it also or you know what was on your mind when when you guys actually planned it? first what we thought was let us give the gmat first like okay uh, we targeted one year mba let us give the gmat first because the gmat score is valid for 5 years right so we went ahead with the gmat exam we fixed our date and we got our score then since we both had decent scores we like let's apply so regarding the finance thankfully we did not have any much financial liabilities back home we just had to take care of ourselves we took it basically step by step first the gmat exam college applications and then how that's how we proceeded this So uh, how long did it take for you to prepare for your GMAT and you know most people you know they have this problem work along with work they have a lot of problems studying for GMAT so how did you guys manage and uh, you know was it an advantage studying together or was it a disadvantage studying together it definitely was an advantage yeah. studying together because uh, after getting back home when mm-hmm. we, we saw that like one of us is studying the other person also gets mm-hmm. motivated to start mm-hmm. studying And we actually never studied together so yeah. that's a very uh, see as uh, we just went to we actually opted for a, a classroom coaching because we were like skept, uh, skeptical ki whether we would slack if we do yeah, an online yeah, coaching yeah, yeah. so we went for a classroom coaching on weekends uh, on weekends and we would come back and we actually studied the last one one and a half months before the date like we fixed a date and then we are like hey, chalo now we have to study like that was like hardcore full on studying where uh-huh. we we not even slack even a little bit uh-huh. initially and we used to try to uh-huh. focus and give as uh-huh. much time daily so that we could get through the schedule uh-huh. so that it start just started getting into system that this is how uh-huh. how that we have to do it go ahead so that we, we are in the routine of actually uh-huh. getting uh-huh. up and studying and doing problems yeah it was difficult for us to actually sit in a class uh, like uh, continuously look at the class for 3 hours because we, since we left yeah, our college we so almost 8 and... years since uh-huh. we left our colleges and we uh-huh. like Then I will back the study, and yeah. again there are some healthy competition also. Uh, like yeah, what happens yeah. is that when I'm studying, the chief uh, feeler it will cover. She like, "Did I also want to study?" study Actually, yeah. we have covered this much topic that I also want to cover. Uh, and the mock test, so that's why, yeah. <laughs> In mock test again, if there is some kind of a score difference, they're like, "Acha, how did you get so much?" I want to know. So that we gave a healthy competition. Yeah. So that was so definitely an advantage. I'm pretty sure that if we had done it different, like hmm. separately, it would have been much difficult than it was doing it together. I had seen Arun's videos on YouTube quite a lot regarding his. application processes regarding the logic like why should we do an mba what the colleges looked at when i mean that kind of made uh, you know resonated with me and you no know, then we thought ki since we had invested so much in gmat now let us you know invest a little more for our application process yeah we have come this far so and so we like chalo uh, to next day the the day we got a score the next day i called crack verbal and i took the three college package for each of us because we had come this far now only the application process left but till then also actually nobody had told us like application process is more difficult or equally difficult as gmat like that is more important or equally important because when we started we were like only only gmat score is there if you get a high score you will pakka get into a good college but once we started the application procedure we realized how important it is like the essay writing the interviews 
they are again i emphasize it is more or equally important as dean i can vouch for that uh-huh. because i have a better score and i did not get yeah. as many admits as her or even interview calls so lot of people who uh, you know come to us and say that okay tell me what how i should write that i will get an admit there is no answer to it exactly right? yeah. it's all about how you portray yourself right and again you cannot portray yourself as someone who has got it right yes. that is also the reason why we tell people that never you know pick things from other places right it has to be your original uh, yeah. you know i say perfect perfect so uh, so yeah how many schools did you shortlist and how did you you know i remember our discussions on short uh-huh. shortlisting schools and you know uh-huh. how you should go about it so uh, you know what was on your mind in terms of how many schools you shortlisted and uh, i guess you divided it between round 1 and round 2 also right yeah, so yeah, yeah. Uh, can you tell us a little bit on that plan Uh, as we talked to you, you only advised us that you know you applied since we are targeting one year, we were clear on that. You advised us to apply for colleges in UK, UK, yeah, okay, and in India. So on in round one, we had targeted Cambridge, Cambridge IIB, and IIMA, 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 and the other. Uh, so we did not have the time to apply uh, for Oxford uh, also uh, because we had to write the essays and to make uh, sure that there is good. Good. So we so we targeted Oxford for round two, two. but we did not have the time for that. Time for that. Yeah, so that's um, how we went about. As we were mentioning, even though I had a lesser uh, GMAT score, see that's the thing with GMAT score. We were was like quite confident that my will be okay because I have a GMAT score. <laughs> okay, see that actually because at that time nobody told us that you know this is so important. I worked okay. Now I have only essays. I have to work on my essays. Whatever happens, so <laughs> I was night and all you know wrote my essays. So I got from IMA. Cambridge yeah. ISB uh, interview calls. I converted IMA and ISB. Oxford also I I converted. I got interview call and I converted. Cambridge I could not convert the interview because I knew that I, my my interview performance was not as well as I hoped it would be. Yes. Yeah. And for me, uh, I I converted ISB and IMB. I got a call from IIB Calcutta also, but I did not go for the interview ah, because by, the time, by that uh, time ISB, ISB hmm. we had finalized we are going to ISB. ISB. What was the major difference between the way they actually assess a candidate? during the interview for oxford and cambridge the interview was more personal i would say uh, here they okay obviously they'll ask why an mba why, what do you want to do after an mba and why uh, oxford or cambridge that is the standard question after that the questions were more personal they want to know my story like that's how they were evaluating candidates what kind of story can they contribute to the cohort so they want to know what my interests are what do I, why do i do this what would my opinion be in a situation like this for cambridge i had a question like tell me uh, something that uh, that you think is right but few people around you think is wrong so those kind of questions you're not normally prepared for those kind of yeah, uh, personal yeah. uh, you know the, those kind of questions how they are evaluating yeah. when for oxford i remember the interviewer she was more interested in how do i think so for example she asked me for uh, if you miss a class how do you make it up how do you manage that with your cohort so those uh i think they wanted to see if i had a story to contribute to the class like, what, what do i bring of, what kind of a person you are yes so that one thing for isb the interviews obviously they are and yes uh, foreign colleges they ask uh, you know whatever i had written in my essay they would you know very will make sure like okay the questions are also very different for example oxford and cambridge had a question like what is your spectacular failure write in 200 words so that's a very interesting question like um, indian schools don't didn't have those questions and then tell me a time where you know you had a conflict with Uh, uh, your colleague and how did you resolve, resolve it? it yeah. So yeah, so the question, the interview questions are also on the similar lines as were in the essay. More like how do you manage a situation? In case of ISB, at least my interview, the interview, the questions were standard. Uh, like you know how my career, what is the one thing uh, achievement that I had done in my career? Like uh, and then a few interests and you know, uh, I would say more career. So career oriented and yeah, mostly like then yes, obviously in the end they also try to analyze like a little bit of my uh, social side like what do I what am I interested in what do I do in my free time yeah so that that I think was the major difference and um, in ISB uh, uh, the interviews were alums in Cambridge and Ox- for Cambridge they compulsorily have a professor a Cambridge professor will interview you for Oxford I gave my interview in India here in Delhi itself. So there, the uh, the team, uh, the admission team had come to interview. A senior admission team members had come to interview. How was your interview? With it? Yeah, so for me, the interview was a little bit different hmm. uh, for ISB. I don't have any call for from any foreign universities. <laughs> 
because yeah of my bad essay writing <laughs> <laughs> not bad essay <laughs> i don't think so <laughs> like i was very uh, like i personally did not connect to the college hmm. more specifically hmm. i wrote more about consulting i personally hmm. it was more like there was a kind of maybe misconnect with the hmm. college so hmm. that's what and i i i do think that like it, it uh, my higher jima did get Hmm. Into my head that I would get in properly, so maybe I'd not work as hard as Anu or Asif maybe. But I'm pretty sure that it was more about the connect issues hmm. that uh, the campus hmm. was not yes. consulting hmm. campuses, hmm. and my essays were mainly focused hmm. on consulting, good, uh, and maybe that is hmm. the reason. And why. that is one thing I want. Just sorry to interrupt. I want to add. Foreign schools definitely look whether you fit into their college. That is a very big criteria, as Vivek mentioned. They have they they clearly mention what they have to offer, and these are the things. This is the culture. they assess you on that ki whether you fit into the culture whether your career goals fit into their what they have to offer that is one thing they assess very much so i yeah so i think maybe that is the reason they did not because they were not exactly consulting schools hmm. so if I, like if there are other campuses like lbs and other thing maybe they would have actually considered my profile a little bit different i do not know but yeah but for indian schools i was uh, for uh, for me the isb interview was more of like a grilling interview <laughs> So we were called into the campus. Mm. Um, actually, the mm. people who were called into the campus were the people who had high higher GMAT score than seven four seven forty. That's Vivek's theory. At least that's, that's what the people had official, seen. That's not official. <laughs> that's not official. That's official. That's Vivek's so, theory. So uh, yeah, but they did say that it's like the high potential candidates. That, that's just Vivek. <laughs> no, they did tell that. So uh, so the admission team had told that the high potential candidates are being called into the campus, and. Uh, Like people who who were there, at least the friends that I have ha- had there with me, mm-hmm. they all had questions that basically were grilling us on. Mm-hmm. They wanted to see how we handled pressure and tense situations. Mm-hmm. So for me, they were basically they took up one aspect of uh, what I've written in the essay mm-hmm. and they started asking questions on it, uh, further elaborating and cross questioning and cross questioning to the level that uh, I would not be able to answer anything and I would actually start panicking. <laughs> But luckily, I was like I did not panic there and I tried to manage the situation by like not uh, saying anything or blocking. And I was true to what I did. And like some people uh, with ah, me yeah. also had questions because hmm. they only had guess estimates. Guess estimates. Like so, it's so all basically they were like, you have you have to tell how many stars are there in the sky or how many people <laughs> stay in Delhi. There are four four or five questions like that throughout the uh, interviews, and that was it. Yeah. So uh, people who were there in the campus in Mohali had those kind of interviews, mostly questions that they basically wanted to put us in tense and pressure. Round one. This is round one. Yeah. After the interviews over, and uh, you know how long did it take? till the time you actually got uh, mails or admit letters i would say i think one uh, month one month yeah came one month yeah ifb or one month cambridge and oxford i think it's uh-huh. they, they give timeline they, they have clear timelines and they follow those timelines we have been connecting to other peers also who are join who are joining in the class of 21 mm-hmm. so de- the questions were definitely profile based even so whenever they choose the uh, panel also mm-hmm. yes, it based on the pe- people's profile actually the uh, interview interview uh, the people who conduct the interview in I- alums are the alums there so uh, for example in my line the person who was interviewing me one person was niti ayog i think uh, and uh, other person also from was from some board in the public sector or energy industry i don't remember exactly and there were three panels from what i remember and all of them were profile based so Uh, for a person who from automobile they have somebody who's worked in the automobile mm. sector or something like that mm. so it's uh, the uh, the questions are very specific, specific to the profile and the person who interviews you will also have some experience in that area mm. so uh, you know once everything is done uh, you know it's a big monkey off your back right it, it, yeah. it, it started somewhere in uh, uh, february started in february went on to august september time frame i guess yeah. Yeah. december though right? November, no, 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 no,
Yeah. Yeah. She was actually heartbroken when she yeah. had a six nine, yeah. and I got a seven fifty. Because I was scoring more in mocks. Anyway, that's a you know story <laughs> yeah. for some other time. But then yeah, now when we look back, we were like, oh, it was totally worth it. Like you know how yeah, it was, it was a, a self discovery, self discovery yeah. process. So uh, you know, in terms of planning your joining the program, you would have uh, you know actually put down your papers by January, right? So how no, did you? That's a five month notice period. Okay. Okay. So, but then you took it back because you deferred your plan. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes, yes. yes. Actually, we thought of leaving just two days before uh, the college starts, as we had got Mohali campus. But then the COVID situation happened, and then we had we withdrew our resignation and uh, yeah, we deferred our admission for yeah, deferred. Sure. Yeah. Anything that you think that uh, you know aspirants should not do or should not uh, expect out of this whole process, right? Sometimes you know you come in with lot of. things on your mind in terms of assumptions and uh, you know uh, misconceptions about the process or you know how you know g matters or how the application process is anything around that which you believe that this is absolutely not something you you should you know think will happen to you right so uh, like a misconception or something that you should know from you know from the beginning itself that you know this is completely different this is not how it it's going to be for you one thing i would like to say that i've seen also in some people is that like don't try to be arrogant that you just got an admit somewhere mm. it does not make you a different uh, person than yes. what you are yes. some people start thinking that they've achieved or they've conquered the world mm. just because they've gotten an admit to like some colleges say but that's not the case yeah. so try to be humble first <laughs> yeah. i think here is the key is like not to be too stressed like that is Haan. something even i was too stressed with my i have to admit i was very stressed with my gmax score yeah like, yeah it's more of a process it's process. not a one day one thing one day think ki aaj ek exam likh diya to ho gaye so it's a it, it take everything comes with time you give your gmat then you give your uh, essay then you give your interviews and everything will work out just you know just take it one by one i think and and look if you are like i would also say just keep your aiming at a college look at their average gmat score okay look okay, if this is a college this is average gmat score then yes try to get a little more than that so rather than being stressed about okay, okay i have to get a high gmat score if i don't get it i will not apply or you know that kind of thing can be avoided and 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 one more thing that i would add, like mm-hmm. to add is that uh, essays are not like a like single essay that fits mm-hmm. for all the colleges kind of a thing yeah so, so So whatever colleges you are applying to, try to mm. be uh, like try to understand what they are mm. looking mm. for from you, and try to connect yourself so that you can show why you would be fit into that college. Mm. Rather than seeing that I've written this essay, now I'll take this essay and I'll just jumble it for another college and just give it to them. So I think this has been so awesome in terms of uh, you know getting your insights on uh, you know the entire process. It's been extremely, extremely. Uh, you know inspirational for all of uh, you know people who are watching us and i think more importantly what also i realize when i speak to you is each of you have different skill sets right and i think uh, you know what you have tried to do is you know though everything merged down to you know one final school i think you played on your uh, strengths each step and uh, you focused on that you know maybe whether it was gmat or essays or interview at every step you worked on your strengths and then finally got on to what you wanted to right your desired uh, yes. goal so i think that was something that was uh, you know uh, i think it is uh, you know summarizes our entire discussion and summarizes your last year's journey so yes. i wish you all the best for uh, you know your uh, mba when you started the year later